check, check, check. All right, welcome back. Uh, the, our next presenter is Gary Cacciadori, uh, who I'm really excited to present. Um, when I was uh, working on skateboard ramps, Gary was like a go-to guy to talk to you about how to get this thing going, you know, the snags that are happening there, and he'll totally say that he wasn't like a big part of it, but he was the person I totally looked up to when that project was happening. So it only made sense to invite Gary as one of the first presenters uh, in the series. And so many of you know that he's a graduate student at UBC currently. Uh, his, his show is currently up still, right? Yeah. No, it just went. Uh, he had a phenomenal show at the BMA um, because he's a Baker Prize winner and most recently a John Mitchell Prize winner. Uh, he's, he's really just. Uh, really inspirational artist, really, for, for anyone in Baltimore or anywhere. Uh, and I'm really excited about this talk because I don't know if he's going to talk about Jocko Whaley or about. Uh, Jersey barriers, like this, this things that divide highways, or uh, the perfect formula for wheat paste. Uh, hopefully, he'll talk about all those things, and but I don't know. So, without further ado, here's Gary. So, uh, just a quick note for the state. I didn't really that much. Made it all work. So, uh, let's see. <laughs> so I have this image of Jordan sitting on a uh, bench in a bus shelter. And this is kind of what I do. I've been doing it before. Uh, this is a poster that I made of Xeroxes. Um, so it's, you know, big, 10 feet by 16 feet, something like that. And it's made of. Uh, uh, it's basically a um, big Xerox plotter that does um, uh, blueprints. So, you know, you see the big building plans, the guys are handing out paper on one of these, and it makes like three foot wide by 200 inch long prints, and then you take them and take them together. So, this one's actually a big poster that folds up, and it's actually uh, the bundle that's second from your right is the poster that. No, it doesn't actually, but it's, it's a similar poster, a similar size poster. So they fold up about that big and fold them up. And take them wherever you want to, staple them up, and uh, you know, take them back down and put them into a uh, US Postal Service um, uh, uh, prior mailbox and send them off to the next guy. Uh, so anyway, this is, a, this is a poster that's made of multiple parts of drawings. And there's some stuff up front, if you guys want to hand, pass it around. Uh, the white notebook is a notebook of all the drawings that I've done for this project. Uh, they're the originals, so don't like, you know, break them. Uh, and there's a couple of books on the right that are also, you know, along that line. So basically, the process for this is, you know, to do drawings uh, and then to piece them together. So to make the bus shelter that you've been sitting at, um, we have four drawings that are used. Uh, Top left is the uh, bus shelter, which is also drawn so that you can build it into a little sculpture of bus shelter in the smaller scale version. And there's a book of like smaller scale sculptures on the right of guess when it passes around. Um, and then the brick behind it is a drawing of a brick from a 7-Eleven in North Baltimore. And the bushes that are also behind it are bushes that were in the parking lot of the college and forever. And then the sidewalk is the sidewalk on the far right of the drawing of a vacant lot, which is uh, was a vacant lot. It was actually being built at uh, Madison and Allison. So all these things are somewhere. They're all drawn different scales. Basically, they're all drawn to the same size. They're all eight and a half by eleven inch drawings. Uh, so the vacant lot is 160 times uh, well. One one hundred and sixty of original scale. Um, bus shop is like one one forty eight, and I think this is like one eight. So, and everything changes as you do it like that. Just because, yeah. 
And it's all just a basic Photoshop process. So you take each item, you erase the parts around it, and then you put them together in Photoshop. So something like the bush, you erase all the little white spots. Uh, so it's all about drawings in the beginning. This is uh, my bathroom drawing 148 scale, a quarter inch to a foot, and you can know, take a look at it. Pencil drawing, uh, it's designed so that you can build my bathroom. Uh, it comes in the book that's getting passed around. So cut it out, take it together, and People do actually buy the books and make them. This is uh, Ryan Patterson and Rachel Nelson. And I think he made it himself. Uh, so yeah, yeah. And then it also gets modified again. So this is a suite of prints, a uh, box set of prints, uh, of all, all the uh, surfaces in my bedroom. Um, so, and that's actually in the box up front here. But you open up the box, and you know each surface is wrapped in its own little thing. You can get them out, hang one, hang them all, get them open. Actually, it takes up a lot of room when you spread it out. So, you know, that's how that part works. Uh, right. And you miss all of that if you want to move the space. Or, in this case, uh, yeah, this is another subject. This kind of goes back to Jordan sitting on the bench. Uh, odd thing kind of occurs when you have like a life size depiction of a toilet somebody wants to make you the city on. And this is uh, from a Facebook screen to see. So I'm not sure who the two people are, but they're friends of somebody. Um, so, yeah, uh, yeah, and you know, this is actually just kind of like a secondary thing. I'm really didn't really design it for people to close with it, but it seems to work. Uh, and then you can also build a room that's the same size with the same you know, walls and bathroom, put all the pieces in it. So this is uh, this is from the installation I did at the museum in September. And that's uh, the bathroom, so you can actually go into it. I didn't really get any good Facebook pictures of people sitting on the club. I heard a lot of people were uh, yeah. So that's this. This is a larger than that installation, and it was basically a 25 by 40 foot room with one half being the interior, uh, using all these different drawings. So this is the you know 10 or 12 drawings pieced together, uh, with all the out props, with all the drop ceiling. Uh, and then the other half of the gallery space was an exterior. And it's all parts of the end. So, uh, you know, asphalt, grass, weeds, some shrubbery, some bushes, a dumpster, some prison areas, and a lot of cement block. Kind of designed as, you know, a potential space outside the uh, and yeah, so basically, once again, this is you know, just this process, and then the interior again with all the chains, and right, another you know, screenshot from Facebook of somebody posing, and and the museum kindly uh, let people take photographs of uh, in the galleries, which is really good. And there's that, did you, that I guess, very easy Did anybody read the article in the New York Times about uh, the cell phone pictures of the Venice Biennale? Uh, it became like, you know, they were, they were talking about this kind of huge like process of everybody photographing themselves and part of all the pieces. I think it leaves a little bit more uh, copyright uh, negligent in there. Or oblivious, I guess, the proper word, right? Copyright oblivious. Um, except for the system chapel. Somebody paid for that. Um, so anyway, uh, uh, parts. Uh, this is a detail from the MAC installation. Uh, you know, pallet on the floor or on the 
past fall. Actually, I did a series of PAL posters where it's like PAL on a different surface. So there's a new PAL on asphalt, PAL on grass, and PAL on sidewalk. Um, didn't bring them today, but uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So these are just like the drawings, once again. You know, this is the drawing that was done for the asphalt. So. And these are relative, I guess, the light and you know, such. This may be a little light for what the drawing is, but it's actually a fairly light, it's, you know, um, pencil, so it's basically mostly in the H range, 9H to 2B, I think is about the same ones. So, and you get to draw them everywhere, which is nice, because they're all in half by 11, so you can keep them all the forward. I think I drew a lot of this on the bus. It's a little bus ride. Uh, I've had such a for a long time. And uh, this is the drawing for the palette, which is actually also the drawing so that you can get the palette structure. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the good And you know, other the variations just show in this kind of process. Uh, you know, this is an image of the floor from the DMA. And then those are the two drawings that are used to get the grass and the leaves. So it's just one read. And I turn it a lot, occasionally I invert it. Uh, and then the grass is just that one point. And then we can go over it again. So if you look around, there's a little clover indicator to where it repeats. And it's all kind of regular. So I can turn it again. I have these strange shadows. So kind of fade in and out of time, so you have to like the other so. Okay, that's it. Uh, yeah. I mean, if anybody has any questions while I'm talking, I, I love to be in a rock, so. More of the BMA, this is a Jersey barrier uh, with chain link fence. So this is kind of the new, uh, the new, the new favorite, favorite system of construction people these days, you know, and then start the chain fence above the Jersey barrier. And then uh, the brick sidewalk is actually from the big and large drawing, so that's like going on really a lot. So it's super pleasant. Cinder block wall and grass. Uh, and yeah. And another variation of that same piece. This is a fold up poster. That poster is actually like in front of it. So that's, that's how much it folds down to. It. So it's here, four feet of asphalt, uh, full 12 foot of Jersey barrier, and fence, and the cinder block behind it. So you can put in your house if you have a big enough wall. Or you can fold it down to like have less than you know, complete wall. Uh, good for decorating things. Uh, another thing is like cinder block is really like unbelievably, uh, if you, whatever place you put it in, people think that they're walking through that place. It's like, there's this kind of weird, uh, like, trigger. You know, cinder block means you're in the basement, or it means you're like, walking through a, like, a back hallway or a hospital or something, or maybe behind a supermarket, maybe a jail. You know, so you don't, like, you, you just say, yeah, I don't want to be here. Um, and I think it's just kind of, it's like the first time I did a cinder, a cinder block poster, I was hung in my living room, and there's some people came in, they, they kind of did fine. In that section of the room. As you can see, you know, the person scans your room when they come in, and you can see this kind of like, like facial expression that was different while facing it. So it seemed like it worked. Uh, or something, I didn't really know that was how it was going to work. Like, that was actually the first time I really thought about having any kind of trigger. Because it's actually a really beautiful design. Uh, when you think about like, how much material is required to make it, how much it costs to make it. You know, how strong it is, how well it works for building. It's a, you know, one of the better, maybe one of the better designs in the second half of the 20th century. But it's also, like the Jersey Barrier, it's also a great design. Uh, one of the most perceived as ugly, largely because I think it is ugly. And again, I don't think it's like, I don't think it's its fault, especially if it's just seems that you have a aesthetic. Uh, yes. Um, so yeah, this is a this is a blow up of just the fence poster. Um, but this, this is actually the 
offensive is in the last one below. It's a section of this fence kind of reused to do that. that one. So this is actually a modular chain fence, which is another popular, especially popular for um, uh, this little people that buy stuff in the city. Yeah, <laughs> speculators, right? You know, it's like a, it's like the indicator of speculators, right? You know, they, you know, they get a lot and they put a chain link fence around and uh, kind of the line of space. You know, next sort of and it falls down once in a while and makes somebody come back to that again. Uh, so, you know, uh, that's not especially why I did it, it's just kind of like myself. And, uh, yeah. um, this, is a, this is a drawing for the Jersey Barrier. So it's a uh, 124th scale, I think. Half inch to a foot, uh, pencil drawing, you know, cut it out into the 24 scale jersey bear. Uh, and I guess the only drop of oil and connection I can really do with this is uh, I mean, kind of, he's a writer, curator guy, um, skateboarder guy. He's actually got like, a really great series of photographs of an urban polish of, of uh, skate ramps as sculptures. They're all photographed like these sculptures. I, I read about it in uh, Fraction Magazine, an uh, article that somebody uh, He's also written an article on Jersey Barriers for Cabin Magazine, where it's a you know, fairly detailed and accurate history of the Jersey Barrier. It started in, uh, on a highway in California because it was like a you know, super steep grade and it had to be a good body. It was kind of the number one head on collision highway in America. So they built the first one there, and there's this whole kind of weird ramp issue with it where the slope is designed so that when you fall asleep and your car veers into it, your wheel actually rides on the side of it. Uh, while you're riding on the side of it, you wake up, so then you drop back onto the pavement or awake again, and you're probably going to be able to control your car. So it's you know, kind of really, you know, it works really well. Right? You know, you know, there are people that figure out how to go over them. Um, so anyway, the track of Williams are, he starts with this whole like long thing, you know, and you know, they become Jersey Barriers because there's a turnpike that makes more of them than anybody. You know, they kind of like cement the design and, and uh, do most of them. And then you get past that and you know, ends it with, you know, a specific group of skateboarders that have like a whole call built, you know, just on like photographing themselves, skating Jersey Barriers. Which I know very little about. I think uh, I guess Jordan knows more about this. Do you have to put the little like uh, like cement or asphalt ramp to it to be able to use it? You just go for it. You can just use it? Yeah. Right. I do remember one of your books that had like really nice ones where they were like the homemade uh, transitions. Yeah, but you don't need that. That's okay. It's helpful, right. but you don't need that. Right. You're in the YouTube. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I always like that. Like I like that image you have. But yes, the, like the idea of guys with skateboards, like skating along with their forty-pound bags of sacri, you know, <laughs> to, to the location uh, to have like a little more uh, transition. Uh, I never skated. I'm actually, uh, I think I was seventeen when uh, we were playing wheel skating where I was living. And at that point, I was already old enough to know that it's better. Than to, I was already old enough to know that I would hurt myself. So uh, this is a new piece I'm working on, or I was working on, and going to be working on again soon. Some, you know, building a sculpture of a Jersey Bear. Uh, not, not skating, though. Um, so you know, it's five to sixty five with some, uh, you know, three quarter inch ribs, and it'll probably be going into a show. You know, hopefully we'll be going on onto a vacant lot in uh, the Station Wharf area in a few months. Uh, no, I haven't really about that yet, so I'm not sure. But you know, I don't really notice anything. Um, so yeah, so it'll look like a Jersey Bear, because basically, uh, you know, I make everything gray, but Jersey Bear is gray, so it's kind of one of the only things I make that's actually in color. Uh, <laughs> that, that's not enough. Also in color. Uh, that last image was in color, you know, the center block of the Jersey Bear. <laughs> But the black and white version of it looks exactly the same. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so. I'm going to ask you. Uh, this was 
the installation, this is just before the VMA installation where I was like, because the VMA installation was the first time I was doing a big installation life-size environment that you walk into. And there's this weird kind of effect when you walk into these things where everything's gray and you're not. And the people who do those lines, so there's this kind of like strange juxtaposition where people become actually much more colorful than they were before because everything around you is gray. And there's also this weird kind of like softening that happens with the process because the process for this is like, it's the most basic geographic process. So it's a bitmap. It doesn't do it like tonal arrangement, it's just these little flat like squares arranged in a random order and they tens. So it becomes a very fuzzy, kind of like soft gray, uh, warm, nice place to be. Uh, so this piece was like the showroom for what was going to be utilized at the VMA. So each of the panels is one of the surfaces that was used there. There are actually a few more on the other wall, but, um, and each one had a you know, short description written in somewhat like a sales piece, so yeah, you can use this for this if you wish to, uh, and you know, it's all offered for sale at double the cost of printing, uh, um, you know, people won't buy it because it's a lot more work to prep it than it is to get paid, but if you charge a lot for it, then it's kind of like, um, so most of the stuff's actually also, or not the big installations especially, but the little stuff is all made and sold really cheaply. So, uh, you know, it's generally priced at double the cost of print. Um, so, you know, a little close to $10, a little to $4. Those kinds of prices. And, you know, you don't try to sell too many because there's a lot of preparation work because it's all going to be in the same way. Um, but a lot of people are buying them. Production. But the, the point of like pricing them low is partially just that like the anti preciousness thing is uh, you know like, you know, like that. And uh, also because it's it's really like it's kind of ancestry is, is like model road stores and uh, you know toys and cool stuff to fun play with and all this stuff. So you want to price it like you know to make the target of the buyer. Set of labels, you want to be in that kind of same price range, or if you want to be in the train store and then you get a spot of pot, you're not going to want to pay like an Alice for it in 695. So you try to price things in that general range, and also you know, try to price things in that. Like mine are black and white, so you get like 18 for $4, whereas the ones in the train store are all plastic, and so they don't cost like 18 for one. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, you know, this is just like panels and these design, you know, uh, I guess there's like, like kind of, there's, I mean, obviously there are decisions and all that, and there are relationships that we have, but most of it is oriented towards like a uh, walk on our school, or a work school. You know. uh, this is the last installation I did, which came down on Saturday. Um, there was a UMBC in my thesis show. And it's like 18 feet high by 40 feet or so long. Uh, and this is kind of one where uh, I did it. You know, like the VMA one was more like just the exterior of lots of stuff. And this was more like kind of like selective stuff. So largely what the goal was is to make like a, you know, apartment complex environment. You know, the apartment complex dumpster, which is actually a sculptural thing. I swore I wasn't going to do those, but, you know, Seem like the, next step. Uh, the actual apartment wall is from a McDonald's drawing, which I didn't bring on the slide up. But, uh, so the McDonald's drawing is like 186 scale. So unlike the brick from the first one, this is actually like really fuzzy because the bricks are really tiny. When I mean, you're drawing it's really tight when you look at it. It's in the book. But uh, it is really fuzzy in the wall. And the windows are actually like just pieces of the McDonald's windows. But they seem to get, like, they seem to make a pretty good problem. For you know late fifties of uh, office complex building, and then in the, on the ground you have a dumpster and put a one parking space with a little stain, some grass, and then I built an office with it, which really doesn't directly relate to the apartment complex, but I wanted to build an office 
uh, cinder block, so it's kind of nice. Um, I actually used pieces from a, a cinder block stand with the trash can, and there's a lot of pieces on the side, which you might see here. Yeah. So I'll pop on the side with the, the air conditioner and the electrical unit and the motion. Yeah, it's better off than the snowball stand drawn, which is actually the little snowball stand in this. So I made this little kind of a, you know, scenario of parts all on the second scale on the side. And this is for the closing, so the idea of the closing was it's like, you know, come by and work on my car, you know, fucking come to the fucking lot, uh, and we'll drink some beers, and hopefully we'll remember the, which uh, spark plug these five foot wires on the trees. And then when you're drinking beer, it's a broken one the It's a lot of spark foot wires for the 50 keys. Uh, and you don't get it right, it doesn't run. You know? <laughs> so, this, is, this is before electronic emission. But, so, I, I'm old. So, uh, did anybody ever think of a car? Yeah, okay, you're old. Right? <laughs> 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 I bet that's a compliment. <laughs> I'm proud of that. That's, uh, yeah, so anyway, you know, I actually never had a VHR, I was hit for so it was easy. Uh, I didn't really like working on cars enough to like ruin gear with the you know, process. So uh, yeah, this is the you know, dumpster uh, and the oil standing. And I kind of did the grass off the side to, to try to recreate the feeling of how like, they always put farms on the part of the buildings, which are really I was like a little silver grass that goes up three or four feet, and that's what drain the giant. Just don't think it works. Uh, and you know, roughly based on the 90s, it's a good environment for us. I don't know why I found them as a fun kind of places. Uh, yeah, so place size dumps are roasting asphalt. That's the dumpster it's from. Uh, the dumpster drawing. And this drawing was actually done as like a uh, it's, a, it's a dumpster with a lot of trash on top of it and a lot of trash around it. And it was actually uh, documented the day after the Super Bowl. Not this year, last year. So, you know, apartment complexes, Super Bowl parties, lots of trash. Uh, it seemed to all make sense. Um, and, uh, and, and actually, like to talk about like the process of doing the drawing. It's basically I'm doing like uh, I took a drafting class at Essex Community College somewhere in the mid-80s. And it was really a great, great drawing class. We learned more about like, you know, forms and spaces and like kinds of marks than anywhere else. Uh, so they're done basic, they're done like a, you know, drafting, you know, from engineering or whatever. Uh, you know, where you measure the actual object. Well, you actually have measurements for the object first. And then you scale them to the work in the drawing. So in this case it's one thirty second scale, which is three eighths of an inch equals a foot, and you have this nice triangle of blue or you know how many scales are on this is what, four per side times three plus but eleven eleven scales plus a uh, oh, standard rule. Which I think the standard I I brought one with me but I don't know it is. Um, so anyway, so you know you would like you know so you have like a whatever seventy nine inch side and you have the uh, six Six feet plus uh, uh, seven inches. You know, all that. So you mark it like that. You use a T square and a triangle, and you do all the marks, and then you lay out the thing, and then you take a photograph. You know, you have photographs of all the sides, and you draw it, or I draw it. You know, it's basically the photographic view of it. You know, and so on. All right, and uh, yeah, oh, the better picture of the old thing. Which actually isn't really a drawing of an oil stain, it's a computer drawing of an oil stain. I didn't have time. I thought I needed it, so I, I did draw it, but I drew it like, in like, my mask pad. So, and then I just like, you know, made a darker version of the asphalt and dropped it on top of the lighter version of the asphalt. And that's the oil stain. But I am going to be making posters of oil stain. So, in the future. If anybody wants one, let me know. Uh, I'm also going to be making posters for parking spaces, because those things are good. They're going to be really big, so they're kind of like really, you know. Like, there's this whole thing of like making life size stuff, because originally, like, the original like idea of making life size prints was actually, I was going to do, I wanted to do a magazine 
it was like the life size magazine. So each issue was like, uh, and I just wanted to do it like as a curator editor. And so each issue would be like a subject, like it would be the car issue. So everything in it would be, like, every reproduction in it would be life size. So it would be like, you know, life size, pull it out, you know, Mustang, or, a, you know, life size, pull it out, like, you know, dashboard or whatever. Uh, but then you started like figuring out like, how much paper life size cars, and you know, you realize like, some pages can be something like that. It's folded form, and then kind of, it didn't really work, so I figured out like, I just make posters instead. And, you know, not be a curator, do the artist instead. Uh, and it's going to work out. Let's see if I'm really, I'm really enjoying it anyway. Um, so yeah, so the, yeah, the, the parking space is going to be like 10 feet by 18 feet. So it's a really good place to work. Uh, and you know, you really should hang on the floor because it's appropriate for it to be in the right location, I think. Uh, and this is the office. And the office was kind of, this was my thesis shell. I wanted to have like, like, you know, like a room where Parts were so I had like the book of all drawings and I had some of the books in there so you could go sit in you know the color colorful chairs. Um, this was a case where I like added like color to the installation. You know, a red chair and a blue chair and a white table. So this is table really matters color. I, I didn't manufacture the table. Uh, it didn't make sense in this case or something. Uh, plus I really like you know like like when people when colorful people go into a uh, a black and white space is kind of nice to have colorful real object. Mm -hmm. uh, and it had a drop scene on it. And I actually also had a, uh, you know, uh, light. What's it called? Fluorescent lights. Full fluorescent lights in there. And I, and I drew the uh, air conditioner just for the office. Because, you know, a good panel office always has a wall air conditioner. Uh, this is a uh, yeah. This is kind of I guess the first outdoor sculpture I've done, um, and it's a spot of uh, just a scale. Um, sorry, I'm sorry, can't see the base, but yeah, there you go. Yeah, so uh, it's the scale. It's uh, and I guess the the weed paste question came up, right? Uh, what's a good weed paste? Suppose the best weed paste is just to use like clear medium, but that seems kind of like Expensive, so I, I just use like wallpaper paste. And if you go outside, it's, it's if you do like three parts wallpaper paste or four parts wallpaper paste to one part uh, like exterior blue glue, which is really cheap, works really pretty well. Just you know, stir it in, it also peels off really nice since it's not you know, you can't it really And uh, and then in this case, I varnished it, but in other cases, I haven't. Um, but yeah, it's a spot pot, it doesn't open. But it has a little lock on it, so you know, when they bring them to the sites, they lock them. Or even better, they like, actually when they bring them to the sites, I, I work with festivals all year, so I know they're like spot pots. They actually like turn them, they face them to the wall, you know, so they really won't use them before the, the purchaser you know, gets to it. Uh, and I really love it. I think you just drag them off the head truck before they go. And uh, in another case of, uh, Somebody, somebody sent this to me on Facebook, I, I don't know the person. You know, I, I should have, I guess, had the like, their text on the side too, but it's all kind of very college. Um, so yeah, you know, it's good to be a landmark in some way. Did you mention that the people interacting with that more than the speech or government? Uh, you know, it's, it's a it's a sculpture response box, so it's vandalized. No, I mean, I thought about it. I mean, UMBC is not a drinking college. I mean, obviously, if it was a college park, the sucker wouldn't have been there more than a day. You know, <laughs> I would have been riding it down the hill or something, right? But, you know, and like, I may not have done it there just because I didn't want really to get in trouble for hurting somebody. But, you know, uh, it's kind of, I, I don't know, you know, I, I prefer to put stuff outside and not worry about it. I think that. And it's made to be pushed over, and it's not too heavy, so it shouldn't hurt anybody. So, it, it, you know, this is just like two by fours and plywood, it's, it's, you know, whatever, 120 pounds, maybe. Uh, but no, I, I, you know, I was actually, I would be, would have been really happy if somebody had shot me. You know. uh, or not, you know, not, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't need, I don't need anybody to, but it's like fine if they do it, you know. Uh, 
I can make an order for that. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, this is a, I've been doing a lot of big stuff lately just because I had like big spaces that people offered me a show in. And it seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, but actually, I really like making small stuff better because I'm not really that high energy person. So when you make small stuff, you can sit in the sofa and do it, which is drawings. Uh, so this is a you know vacant lot and chain link fence set, play set, so you can you know, purchase it and you can get a little get off play mat and play it out and fill the fence and play it. Uh, yeah, this is a bigger set. This is actually one that the last one was one thirty second scale, so it's you know thirty one by thirty eight inches, it's not natural size. This was a uh, one sixteenth scale, so it's bigger. Oh, five by six stuff. Right. Uh, yeah, so yeah. And, and there's a booster set you can get you on the back wall. But usually the back wall is like the building you tore down or you didn't tear down. So uh, yeah, and that was installed. This was a show that Michael Farley curated in Miami. So before I passed to Miami, he uh, uh, curated a show and his his parents bought a foreclosed condo. So they curated a show about real estate. Uh, and uh, this is my contribution to the kitchen. So I kind of like it's a juxtaposition with the foliage outside. Uh, and this I added, this, this set comes with a, a sofa with detachable cushions and, uh, and a uh, chipping pad. Because there are things that you all can find in vacant lots. Actually, the vacant lot that I drew had a chipping pallet just like five feet away from it. It was on the asphalt next to the lot. So. It seemed to be appropriate. And to go back to the, the sofa, the sofa with the tactical cushions was actually like done specifically to go into the dumpster that we saw a while back. Because you know how you always drive by like apartment complexes and there's always a sofa next to the dumpster. It's, it's really amazing how many people like get rid of sofas in apartment complexes. I guess you when you move, you know, and it's probably your mom's sofa or you know, some cousin's sofa or something, so then you find your room. And you know, it had to use detachable cushions because of course in the euro it's a cushion back for the same. And you know it's more fun to play with too because you can go on top of it. And this is a larger version of the same piece. This is a one fifth scale. So it's twenty feet by or sixteen by twenty feet. And I think the panels were eight were two feet or so tall. Uh, and this is actually also one big sheet. So this folds up into a bundle also when you ship it. You do have to have like reinforcement things to hold the fence up, which makes it a little more really. Uh, but the actual piece, this is done where you have like these strips of paper that are 33 feet wide. And you trim them all and then you splice them together and you take them on the back and then you fold them seven inch intervals, you know, over and over again. And then you have all the ten inch yellow legs and always you usually do a phone in the same package size uh, for modular reasons or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's larger. Uh, and uh, this is an outdoor piece. It's peeling a lot now. Uh, on Charles Street, the former New York fried chicken, one of the more popular places to sober up at the end of the night uh, from what to move on uh, until they, you know, left the building. Um, and it's, you know, this is a, it's actually a decorative block from a drawing that I did of a little bank machine. So it's a decorative, a fancy block that they you know, put around the bank machine. Uh, the same bush as before. Initially, uh, the first proposal for this is actually the uh, chain link fence. I was gonna do like gonna do the modular chain link fence on the wall. And for the windows I was gonna like print it in clear. So that if you're inside you can actually still look out through the chain link fence. Uh, but uh, you know, because it was kind of like one of the, it's one of those buildings that they're gonna redevelop at some point in the future as part of the package of the part of the theater, which it could happen, right? <laughs> um, that doesn't happen. It could happen. Uh, yeah, the other, the other big lot I did, they're actually developing. You know, I, I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, I could have sent that. 
I was going to so. so it was it's from a different location. But anyway, so, uh, so anyway, so you know, the idea was like, you know, the chain link fence, because it's like the, the obvious, like, sign of redevelopment in the neighborhood, but it may last forever. Uh, but I think, like, the Baltimore Development Corporation when this building understood the joke, and uh, <laughs> declined on that. So I did. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, so you know, and, and it, so I, I tried to do something that had like you know some meaning with the location, and, and this particular location is like a historic building. It's very nice, uh, but the lower wall is like 70s, 80s era brick. So it's this you know standard really brick installed in a you know uh, strip strip mall manner that you would see in the suburbs. You know, sat on the lower part of the building, so. I was kind of like, hey, you know, I guess I could like, make it like nicer-ish. So I did like a decorative block instead. So it's kind of, so basically I kind of tried to like do the same thing that they had done really, which I, I don't know if that was the right thing or not. Uh, or, you know, I don't know if that was actually like, as appropriate as the chain of fence, but uh, I tried to do like what everybody tries to do when they fix up a neighborhood or use to fix up a neighborhood. Just try to make it like, like a shopping center in the suburbs. You know, it feels more comfortable. So yeah, you have the bushes, you know, nice landscaping, you know, fun. And here I've like, noticed how many like really nice bushes there are in front of gas stations and things. Or, you know, you know, you, you know, like you know, like wow, that's really a pretty bush, but it's in front of a gas station. So I'm here, you know, somebody actually comes by and like takes care of that bush. You know, there's like a huge landscaping business for you know well-maintained foliage that nobody will look at. Uh, uh, but yeah, you know, it's, it's important. Uh, so that's what I tried to do, and I don't know if but it's kind of pretty. I mean, a lot of people didn't know it was there, which is nice too. And this is just a small piece like that, you know, quite right there. Another module you can sort of be kind of beautiful on some levels. Uh, you see them a lot when you watch like, you know, presidential things and uh, marathons and people get married, like things people get married. And you know, that's really, I think it's from my working at festivals. I, I, I moved a lot of these around. They work really well. Uh, this is close to the end. Yeah, somebody asked me if I like, ever sold stuff to people that made Christmas villages, and I, I sent them this image and said I was trying to build a village, but I hadn't gotten very far. Uh, so this is you know, as far as I've gotten on the village. Uh, I have a bacon lot, I have a bell stop, I have a snowball stand, and a bouncer. Oh, and a utility box, which is really kind of important. Um, and I do plan to go like a website utility box in the near future, hopefully. Install it on a big lot somewhere near the uh, uh, Jersey Bear, you know, possibly stuff like that. Because uh, it's all about positive things, right? You know, utility boxes and, and spot pots and Jersey Bear is, like, Jersey Bear is a spot pots being like construction, right? So it's, you know, it's good. It's, <laughs> People are like fixing streets, you know, doing good things. Uh, and uh, you know, utility boxes are important. You know, it's how you get your electric, it's how you get your cable, or your you know, gear in there, right? You know, it's this I don't think this utility box specifically is a garden box, but it could be. Uh, and this also has like a, you know one of the newer drawings I did where the front right is a drawing of like the concrete pads they're putting in for a bus stop, bus stop. I think when buses stop hard, they make the, the asphalt really big ripples. So now that the concrete pads in, which is really kind of neat. So that's like a, you know, uh, you know, a drawing of like 11 by 50 feet of concrete with a big pad. And they really lose a lot of work, because that's, that's only like a four month old pad on the drill. Uh, and I, I would, would really like to know what size on the pad is in the future. Yeah, so, let's see. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know who this is. No. Oh, this is actually a drawing. I mean, this is a silkscreen idea. You know, don't it's not the direction I'm going in. I just uh, <laughs> I actually had to do it as like a test print for you know, mm -hmm. uh, one of my jobs at college. Uh, but it seemed like a you know, different way to end things. So. And anybody, anybody else a dumpster? Yeah. Really? Right. Just because we're weed up, right? So, um, I have been doing like drawings of different dumpsters that I like to remember. And I'm really like, obsessed with dumpsters, and I've never done dumpsters by any of them, actually. I was 
closed or news. Well, you know, the good stuff's always underneath stuff and it's heavy. <laughs> so, and then you get like bought somewhere and it's, you know, it's not worth it. And I never did anything really good out of dog space. Um, so I'm not like actually, you know, like, in that realm. It's just, I think I, I live around a lot of apartment complexes, so I'm kind of encircled by apartment complex cultures in the neighborhood. So you, you look down the wall and uh, they're actually kind of nice. You know. So that was everything I had. That's all I've done. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm afraid to do anything illegal. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 for some reason I thought if you didn't have permission, I was going to ask deeper about how you did that exactly. Uh, the uh, Baltimore Velvet Corporation owns the building wanted to beautify the site. Mm -hmm. And uh, and actually Marion Weed, some of you guys know her, <laughs> was working with them and you know, she coordinated it. They actually even gave me like they actually gave me printing money. Wow. Yeah, I was really surprised. But uh, yeah, actually, it was, it's funny because I used to do that when I worked for the city. I did the same thing with them, like where they would be like, "Oh, you know, we have to board the building. Let's care about we want to like, do something on it." And and then you have a bunch of money, so you say, "Well, you know, if you don't, if you if you let an artist to do something, on it, I can uh, probably line somebody up for you." Uh, and you know, if you give a little bit of money, but you know, you can't like, pick on the design. So like the various ones that like happen like that are like the diamonds that Sean Flynn did down the street from art next to the current space. Yeah. They're an example of that. You know, it's the exact same thing. Well we're building corporations. So this looks so lovely. We need the you know movie posters. So you know you can get you. Uh, so yeah, you know, I don't know, I don't do really evil. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I, I uh, have great respect for the people who do it, uh, but I you know, don't. You know, I wasn't good at knowing all those people. I was young. It would be really embarrassing to finish. Were you thinking? Actually, not anymore. It would be really embarrassing when I worked in the city. Now it would be embarrassing. Like, were you thinking about graffiti when you, like, found, when you, like, started meat tasting? Like, how did you come to that? Uh, I came to it from a lot of. Place. Probably actually uh, uh, one of the first jobs I had out of college was like hanging wallpaper in like uh, inner city real estate. It was still popular for like slumlords to like wallpaper instead of paint. So I like learned how to wallpaper, you know. It was fun, you know. So <laughs> that's how I got into like the wheat tasting aspect of it. And then I also worked for like sign shops in the eighties and totally loved the whole like process. I mean, I'm totally, you know, I like all the illegal stuff. I also really love billboards, you know, I think they're, you know, fun to look at. So uh, I'm a fan of uh, any form of visual communication in public right away. Uh, so yeah, that, uh, you know, the wheat pasting is actually like standard billboard process also. I mean, it's actually, it's not, it's not really graffiti. The graffiti guys got it from the billboard guys. So you, know, you go with your, you know, like, I mean, I, and nowadays you're using a lot of, like, stretch vinyl. But there's still probably 50% of the billboards in Baltimore are uh, you know, paper print and uh, slap on with, with another variation of wallpaper paste. Uh -huh. um, the, the wallpaper paste that you were talking about, like, how different is that in composition from flour? Uh, totally. It's, it's a cellulose, uh, it's like a, some form of plastic, I think. I don't really know. It's not a wheat paste. Not a wheat paste. Yeah, I mean, you can still buy wheat paste. Uh, some people still use it, I think, for outdoor stuff. Like they boil it because it's cheap. Um, for the outdoor, eh, you know, it's not. I mean, it's actually funny when I was doing like the BMA show, I used wheat paste for the floors and stuff, and I was talking to the, the head installer, and he's like, uh, you know, you're not using a like, wheat paste, <coughs> you know, that's like a food product. And the whole bug issue of museums and collections. You know, it's like, no, yeah, that's plastic. And nothing eats it. But you know, actually, it's interesting when you like pour it down on wallpaper in old houses. Bugs like 
the two and under the wallpaper and the door and all that kind of things. But yeah, to go back to the whole like repasting thing, it's, it's funny because the it's actually interesting. Like I was like looking for like formulas and, and somebody said like oh you need uh, like Harry Hoffman's uh, steal this book because he has like his formula for repasting, which is uh, evaporated milk, which is supposed to be really fantastically good for certain you know, certain surfaces and holds better than everything. But it's also really gross. You know, so I say with the wall, you know, with the uh, inorganic wall in the case. Anybody else? Switch the lights on in the dark room. 